Thank you all for joining us for the 2021 April PVD webinar series. We're going to talk today about the x lights transitions and some new additions and updates for 2021. And we're actually going to do kind of a, a little um, uh, a little refresher of what exactly transitions are. So if you're new to x lights, uh, I've kind of reworked pretty much all of the material from uh, a webinar I did two years ago, and we're going to update and have a little bit more thorough, in-depth information about transitions and what exactly x uh transitions are. Um, so what, what, where you can find these, the uh, x lights transitions are found in the layer blendings box inside x lights uh, now, don't worry, because we are going to go through, and I have an entire section where we'll go through and talk about a number of these uh, in inside x lights so there'll be full demo. But I have a couple slides with a little bit of information that I really want to get through. <clears throat> and um, we're going to go ahead and just motor through this and give you a kind of a little bit of understanding beforehand, and then you'll get to see the hands-on afterwards. So... You can always find uh, the x lights transitions uh, in the layer blending box. You'll see them here where you have a tab that says in transitions and out transitions. You'll have a time in, times in parentheses S stands for seconds, and that's where you're going to make your adjustments or changes or edits to use for your sequencing. You can see it's set up here. You can see in and out transitions. And it says here transitions allow you to change an effects state at the beginning and at the end. Uh, at, at the end of the timing of the effect. So the transition only occurs at the beginning and the end, but you can extend that through by using the exact time that you want, uh, and the entire effect can be taken up with the transition. So that's something that is rather important to know. Um, how many are there? How many transitions are there? Well, there's 21 of them currently available. When we started at, uh, in x lights I want to say 10 transitions, and to date, a huge thanks to uh, Kevin Mojek. Kevin has worked every year uh, to add some sort of new transition into x lights Since 2019, uh, we've seen at least 10 or 11 new transitions, and they're very wonderful. You'll, you'll get to see the newer ones here uh, tonight. So um, the new transitions, which are swap, shatter, and circles, uh, also, quote unquote, newer would be considered uh, stars and pinwheel, blobs and doorway and zoom. Those are kind of the newer ones, um, but we're, and we're, we won't cover all of them. But uh, a, a lot of this, you really do have to sit down and play with. So, how do you add a transition to an effect? And they're rather easy. All you have to do is make sure you select the effect, and when you apply, it's applied either to the start or the end of any effect. It's an in transition. It starts at the beginning. It's an out transition. It, it shows at the end of the effect. Um, enter a number in the time S box. It, that is in seconds. Uh, you can have 0 0.1, 0 0.15, 0 0.2, 0.25, whatever. Uh, th that iteration of 0.5 seems to work rather good. Uh, I, I sequence at uh, 20 frames per second. Uh, if you sequence at 40 frames per second, this gets a little bit more um, precise for you. It allows you that. Uh, the effect will show a marker above the effect. As you can see, the green line here, and you see the red line here. That that marker will show you that there is an, a transition in applied, and that's in green, and the red is a transition out that has been applied to the effect. And if you want to see what that transition is or how that works, you just know that now that you know that you, what these lines above the effect are for, you can go back to the layer blending box and see, oh, what transition was used on here? Well, it was fade, and then you'd have to click on the tab to see what was used on. This is on the out transition. This is on the in. So uh, the other thing, too, that, that, that's rather interesting is the length of the green and red markers are also uh, are not just a visualization of the transition. It's a visualization of the exact length of the transition. So when you look at the timeline and you compare this to your waveform, where you can see the MP3 above it, um, you can see that the time that it takes to go that distance is actually shown on the screen. So you can adjust it to fit an exact pop or an exact zip or moment that, of movement that you want to show. And I think this is why I really love transitions the most is because 
if you take the time to get down to the point three, point four, point two of a second to make that transition, so it shows that movement and it, it gives you a pop. Uh, that that's a lot of work to get to that level, and that's one of the reasons why it does take quite a while to sequence a song, especially at, at whenever you have, you know. 30 plus groups that you're sequencing or 30 or 40 or 50 or 110 props that you have and you want them all to do something a little different. That's the kind of thing that you do. Um, so another thing that I want to make mention of and we're, we're actually going to go into this. This is the X Lights preferences screen. Uh, there is an option to turn on and turn off the preferences for the display transition marks. So we can turn that on. If that green and that red line above all the effects annoys you, this is how you get rid of it. So you would go into File, Preferences, Effects, and click on the Effects Grid, go to the, uh, the tab here, and then just uncheck this box, click OK, and you're done, and it takes those away. And we'll, I'll demonstrate that for you too. So there, there are there there can be a couple issues with the uh, transitions effect or the transitions in general. Uh, and number one, uh, if you overcompensate on one end, so let's say the effect in this instance is five seconds long. If you have an in transition that, that that is four seconds, and if you have an out transition that is one second, and this is five, it's gonna it's gonna line up exactly where it should. But if this out transition is much longer, maybe it's two or three seconds long, you can see the overlap, and that's what this yellow indicates. So perhaps you copy and pasted this effect from one set of timing marks to another, and now that timing mark set is different. It's a different size, and you resize it. You may, you may want to come down here and, and adjust your out transition time to do the fade out or to do the transition that you want that fits within that timeline. Now, just because this does this doesn't mean that X Lights is not going to, X Lights will try to make it work the best that it can, but uh, again, I, not being a developer, I don't, I don't really know the exact answer. I, I think it's a decision X Lights makes it either, it could be a coin toss, it could do one or the other. So, uh, but it can't do two transitions at one time. So just be aware of that. If you see yellow, one of your ins and outs is either too long for the area. Just kind of look at that. So uh, transition adjustments, Th there are some adjustments that you can make to a transition. And how we do that is in the layer blending box, we have a value curve enabled right here under this adjustment slider. So that's two adjustments that you're able to make. And then we also, uh, we also have um, the reverse direction option, which is this little checkbox here down on the bottom left. Now, uh, keep in mind these options aren't always activated for each and every effect. Some effects don't have them or you can't reverse, but you can adjust, uh, uh, you can adjust, let's say for, for instance, you can reverse uh, one effect, but you can't use the adjustment slider on it. Uh, and then in other instances, you, the adjustment slider works perfectly fine, but the reverse is not available because you can't reverse whatever it is that you're trying to do. So there are some limitations. Just be aware that some transitions don't utilize these functions. So um, with that being said, uh, some, some effects uh, actually effect the, the, um, the, the uh, effect lower than it. So if you have a layered situation such as this here where you have this one effect on the bottom layer and this effect on the top layer, this transition here that is selected happens to be an in transition of a swap and you can see that as it's doing its swap as it's in the middle of its transition it's taking and warping or affecting the effect down below and so um, it, it is kind of a warp uh, type transition. Swirl will do this, Fold will do this, Doorway does this, and so does Swap as you can see here in this example. And I'll, I'll uh, this will probably, you'll see a couple examples of this as we go through them because I've added them in tonight. Um, th you can edit any of your, uh, you can bulk edit any of your uh, transitions. So uh, basically you have to make sure that number one you have multiple effects selected at one time first. Once you have multiple effects selected, click and drag. Um, then you need to right click over the field that you'd like to edit. So in this case, I right clicked over top of the fade button or the, the, uh, the, the drop down and where it says fade and I hit right click and it brought up the bulk edit screen or bulk edit menu. 
and once you make that bulk edit, and I'll show you this as well, you can you can do that not just with uh, the drop down, the transition type drop downs. You can do this with the timing S dialog box. You can do this with the adjustments, the adjustment number, the value curve number, and the reverse. You can do that with all of this. In fact, pretty much everything on here you can do bulk edit on. So you can bulk edit the morph. You can bulk bulk edit the layer blending type. You can bulk edit the canvas mode. You can bulk edit your freeze effect frame and suppress and so forth. So just be aware that you can bulk edit. And uh, what I want to do now is I want to jump into X lights. Uh, I'm I'm just just to kind of start off the demo side of this in X lights. Um, what you see here is you see the off effect, and you're going to see the off effect. And everybody always asks me that. Uh, why do you have the off effect underneath all of these? And the reason I use the off effect is to merely click on this so it renders the effects above it and it plays it through from start to finish instead of me having to touch the effects and you only seeing a partial of it. So I just use this for demo purposes only. There's no value to putting the off effect on the bottom of underneath of every effect. Do not think that. So the first thing I want to show you is just some standard, typical... Uh, layer, the layer blending box. I was working off a different screen. Um, <laughs> I just want to show you the, the some of the basics, the, f the first three basic ones, and then we'll walk through some of the new ones, and then I've got a couple of examples that I'm going to share with you uh, about the transitions. Uh, if uh, you're watching on YouTube, and because I'm I'm recording this live in uh, in the PPD Zoom webinar, uh, but if you're watching this recording, I'm going to put a video up here somewhere that is that is going to link um, I'm gonna put a video up here somewhere that's gonna link uh, our current existing transitions webinar that you can go back and follow that and see a lot more specifics we're dealing with a lot of the new stuff it's kind of an update but this is a little bit different information that's a little bit different information as well uh, so with that being said uh, basically what we have is a basic fade in and fade out transition um, why would you use a fade in and fade out transition? Well, uh, a lot of times it softens the effects it makes, especially when you are dealing with a slower song. Soft fade ins and fade outs are very appealing. They look very professional. They feel complete. You feel very warm whenever you see something like this. If Looking at this, um, just the mega tree, it looks like it's kind of quote unquote breathing. And uh, you can imagine if you wanted to utilize this, you could copy and paste this a number of times in a row and do that over the course of a, uh, uh, of a sequence. And you have that breathing kind of sensation. And th that this is just one way that we can do that. Now, you could also do that another way. You could do that up here in the color palette, but that's not what this webinar is about. Um, another thing that, uh, that we can do with the fade in and fade out, this is an example of having two f effects, one on top of another, whereas where you're doing a fade out from one effect and uh, just having another effect underneath of it in a, another layer. So if we, if we activate the entire effect, we start with the fill, which is the beginning of the effect, and then we transition with a fade out into the bars. So it gives you that nice smooth transition if you have something going on underneath of it. Uh, and you don't need notice that I don't have a transition on the bottom effect. It's just on the top one here. So, and if we go and we switch those around, we take the exact same two effects and we switch them around this way, you can see the difference would be pretty much, it looks the same, but the idea is the effect that's on top is the one that's going to have the transition to allow for that nice smooth change, especially when you're using fade. So uh, this is probably, uh, uh, this may sound really basic, but this is probably one of the biggest things that many people don't consider whenever they're sequencing, is they don't realize that nice hard stop start whenever you have staccato beats. We all love those high powered, high energy sequences and songs, but there are some songs out there that you don't need to do that with, that you really need to have a nice transition from one thing to another. Um, Lindsey Sterling, Carol of the Bells is one song that comes to mind. There's a lot of fade in and fade outs, just because that's the feel of the song. Next, we'll talk about the wipe transition is uh, probably one of my favorites. It's probably the most used preset, uh, or uh, excuse me, transition that I, uh, I have set up in X Lights. Um, I, I utilize this a whole lot. There's a really good example here of how I use it. 
And uh, basically all I've done here is I've taken and I've gone and put a transition for two seconds in and a transition for two seconds out. Uh, this is the default. If you, put, uh, if you put it on, this is what it should look like whenever you select it. So this would be a, a wipe transition with a bars effect underneath of it. There we go. There's the, there's the fill. And then from there, I'll put this on here real quick. There we go. So you have your fill on, and then you have the fill coming off and the bars transition underneath of it. So very easily, you, you created a look between two different effects. And as long as you learn how to layer and use these transitions, you can really come up with a cool look. And this covers roughly, if you click and drag up here in the timing mark, or in the, in the waveform, you can see for one second, that's how long this transition is on this effect here. If we click on this, you can see the out transition is one second long. And that one second is that one second of moving. Now, you can always edit this, make this longer. And let's say, let's say how long is that? So we click and drag here, this highlighted area, 1.8, 1.8 seconds. And that would be, you can see that time has now slowed that down as that transition. And now you can see the whole effect as it plays from start to finish. So this is, if, if you're wondering, whenever you're programming your sequencing, if you're wondering how some of these effects are created, it's not an effect, it's actually a transition that, that you see a lot of times. So here is, here is the, uh, basically the exact same thing. The difference being in, in this instance is the wipe effect. Uh, the wipe transition is on the top, and you can see it comes in a different way. I used a couple different colors. Uh, I switched the bars around. And you can see that the bars effect, whenever you have uh, the bars effect selected and you have 3D mode activated. Uh, did I have it activated over here? I don't remember. Oh, I did. Okay. See how it's underneath? You don't see the see-through of one effect over top of another. In this instance, you do see how those layers are blended. And what I would recommend in cases like this where you can see through, maybe on this one now, we have to go in and put a one second fade out transition. And maybe you want it to blend a little bit. So that kind of softens it, that's number one. Uh, you could also do a different transition, like a wipe transition. So you can, you can see how one going out and one going in and how that creates that dichotomy. And the last thing I want to show you on wipe, like I said, it's one of my favorites. I use this a whole lot. Uh, and that is, that is basically with a buffer. So what I like to do is I'll like to split up the buffer. And you can do this rather easily. If you go to the layer settings and we right click on the buffer, you can right click and you can half the buffer. You can quarter the buffer. You can do top left, top right bottom left, bottom right. You can do thirds, which is what I, 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 I like to use this a lot. I have halves here. I did a left half and a right half. So this is that's all I did. I just selected the on effect. The, there's n the on effect is just on, and it doesn't move. It doesn't do anything. But whenever you, uh, and then this is the on effect here that's only covering this half of the buffer. Here's the on effect here covering this half of the buffer. But this is why transitions are powerful and why they're very useful is if you set those transitions to be uh, set them up correctly these are the kind of things that you can do you can get very 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 detailed with them and um i, I this this is something that I, I find very much very much useful i i quite quickly went to work and learned uh doing things like this was a lot of fun and it, it really is but it they're very detailed it's it's not something that takes you five seconds you spend a lot of time trying to set those kind of things up so um Next, we'll talk about the clock transition. The, the default of the clock is, um, uh, and, I, and you can, the, the clock is nothing more than like a wipe in of a clock transition. So here's, here's, a, here's a little bit longer so you can see as it slows down. So what's nice about the clock transition, if you're trying to end something, this is how you can end it real slowly as it fades out or you have something, an intro that you're, you're trying to create. So it's, it's interesting to see the dichotomy with it. So if you have a, the, the clock in transition, now these are, of course, these are the originals. These are some of the ones that, um, that have been around for quite a while. But if you, if you can see a usage for these, this is rather interesting how you can come out with these. So you have the out transition on top of an, a, an existing effect here. And as it 
transitions out, you can see what it looks like. Uh, rather, I, I, I understand it might not be super impressive, but this time period that's right here is rather cool and interesting. That's where you want to spend your time sequencing, and, and you get a different look that's right there that uh, you don't get any other way. So um, then we also have the clock on top as an in transition, and it, it, it gives it it definitely gives it something different to look at. And one of the things that you'll learn with the this is the tree effect. You can see just kind of like the bars, tree effect is um, it, it it's faded here, so it has that translucent capability at the edge and the top of it and gets darker as it gets down to the bottom. So you can have that see-through type thing as well uh, as part of the effect that you're uh, transitioning from too. Uh, the, next, the next transition that we'll go through is another one of my absolute favorites. I use this in a lot of things. This is called from middle. And this is kind of a, a default from middle. So it from middle, it transitions from nothing where it transitions the middle of the effect from it and it opens it up and then I have it closing so if you can imagine a real fast song and you had these let's see let's say you had this much shorter let's say you had it here and you had a 0.25 and a 0.25 and we this is a half of a second and you put a bunch of these back whoops you put a bunch of these back to back and just just that quickly you've created an effect that you never uh, and now I, I mean honestly this is this is also the curtain effect but keep in mind uh, I mean I know I know I can take the curtain effect and bring it down here and and that's easier right because you can do it from the middle left let's see center open and close and you can do it multiple times change the repeat bam so there you go. This, it, they look the same, right? I get that. But the thing is, is that y you can do certain things with the from middle. And as you'll see here, when we switch on over to the, um, the section here, from middle, what you can have done is something similar to this. So you have the effect going on underneath of it. It's already activated. It's working. And now, because the fill effect covers every pixel with a solid color, and then it opens itself up, and it's this, that neat transition from here to there that really gives you something different to look at. Uh, again, a lot of fun to play with these. Uh, I, I utilize the from middle for a lot of things. And you can see there I did a little bit of f uh, funkiness at the end with the bars effect where it's doing a transition. And we'll get into this. This is with a value curve, and I'll show you this at the end. So I, I, I really enjoy doing stuff like this because this adds a certain touch to the sequence. And a lot of people can't figure out how it's done. There, there's other ways to do this. You could do this with layer blending, and you could turn one of these into a, uh, into a mask. And there's just, there, are, there are different ways to do all this. But this, I found it really easy to work with different things. So um, one of the new transitions is the swap. Uh, and the default for the swap is rather cool. You notice down at the bottom, it's like there's a mirror on the ground as it comes in. Um, so uh, this was a new one that Kevin brought in for me. I really wanted this one because I can see this one being really cool to, to have a lot of fast changes with uh, high-tempo songs. Uh, and I'm sure you've seen it in, I definitely did use it in, in, the, uh, uh, in, this, in the most recent sequence for, uh, for the PPD Club members. So uh, definitely played a lot with these. Uh, the swap is a lot of fun. Uh, here's a little bit more of a, here's the on effect, and, and there you can clearly see how whenever you swap from one thing to another. Now, it's going slow, but if you had high tempo music and it was, it was a real quick changeover, uh, you could see why it might play a little bit more. So this is, would be a swap with a, the out transition going in, and here is a swap with an in transition on each one of these, so you can see what it looks like. Bam. Bam, bam. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. And, uh, you know, if, the, if you've got high tempo music, you can really do some cool stuff with that. So uh, the next new transition that was added this year was, uh, was the Shatter. And if any of you like Halloween songs or you hear those creepy tracks that they like to play or, you know, a nice, a nice big 
bass thump at the end or a big cymbal crash that sustains and I can really see a lot of use out of the shatter um, the shatter transition so you shatter in where the glass starts as a shattered mess and it comes together as a solid sheet and then you have the out transition where it cracks and it breaks apart so I, I thought that was a real fun one that I played with a lot in the last sequence uh, so here in this instance you have you're going from the bars effect you're shattering out and you're revealing the on effect underneath of it and so if we switch those around there's a little difference you have one and now you shatter in where it turns into a solid sheet as opposed to the shattering out from broken glass I guess you could say so again a lot of fun doing some of these things the 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 last transition that was added um, is a is the circles the circles is uh, it's rather fun there are there is an adjustment on here um, and you can play with this so so the uh, this is the out and big circles on the 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 smaller the number the bigger the circles uh, we'll, you know what we'll switch to the beginning here so the smaller the number the bigger the circles the bigger the number the smaller the circles so it that you have to play with it to to kind of learn a little bit more to go through every one of the settings on every one of these transitions just really would take a, a long time and you really should play with uh, a number of these to get yourself familiar with them so here's an instance of this is the kaleidoscope effect this is the pinwheel effect and then we're going to use plasma here and this is the circles out so that it'll transition out and it'll reveal this effect down below rather cool so kind of nifty nifty uh, transition whenever you're trying to get those circles just right too because now you've got the circles underneath of there can you can you imagine going and changing your adjustment to kind of fit well where do I have those where do I have those so it reveals those circles at maybe you could maybe you could get close like oh that looks that looks rather good and it might be hard to tell in some instances too but it's just something neat to play with again now if you had an in transition you could see the circles with the pinwheel here uh, maybe it's a little harder to play with maybe it's something you just need to spend some time messing around with uh, I definitely found it fun it was definitely a nice addition and um, and the next part what I want to do is I, I just want to show you using how to how to actually put these in here so uh, I've already kind of mentioned that um, I've already kind of mentioned that uh, you can um, come up here to the timing grid and click and drag and for that area that overhang area you can kind of nail down how long that effect transition needs to be so there's 0.95 we, if we put 0.95 here on the out transition here you'll see it 0.95 it'll pop right in now you see how there's a little bit over I think I think maybe that's too long let's go 0.85 so look that that kind of made it exactly true trued it up and now we can go through and we can we can come down here and select any of our specific transitions we want to try using let's try the bow tie so the bow tie does that kind of reveal at the end and um, the, and then the bow tie also has a reverse so you can reverse it so it instead of it starting at the middle it goes the opposite way so you have a couple different options there uh, the adjustment slider on the bow tie tells you where the bow tie tip starts so that was kind of an arrow to the right if we slide it over here arrow to the left but it gives it gives you something to play with you can throw a value curve on here too uh, and I think I, I, I'll probably show you this again here in a second so watch the bow tie see how it kind of limps back and forth there really rather interesting kind of effect that that kind of zippy something to something to play with so that's literally all there is to applying a transition just figuring out how long you need that transition for clicking up here you can use this you don't have to use this you can come down here and just put oh I want to I'm just gonna set this to start here underneath here you can't see it I just want it to fade in um, I just want it to fade in at 0.5 and there does the fade in or excuse me fade in and that's maybe that's as simple as you want to do it um, now in this section I want to do a, a, a demo of how to get into the preferences menu say you don't like seeing the green and the red up here so let's go into the file menu here um, if you click on file and preferences 
all you're going to have to do is go to the effects grid and click on display timing marks uncheck that box click OK and X lights uh, will remove all of them and you can see here if we zoom out you'll see there's no little green marks anywhere at all so if we go back in I actually really like these the old sequences had um, errors on them and I don't have a oh, effects grid wrong one there we go and uh, you can just reactivate it by putting a checkbox back in there clicking OK and X lights adds them all back in for you uh, reverse the reverse box and the adjustment slider I just kind of walked you through this a little bit uh, in some of those effects this is the uh, from middle transition I, I, I do like this uh, this is uh, this is a value curve that you can place on the from middle and um, this says custom but there's a number of different value curves there's, there's a parabolic down so if we just apply this you can see what it does whenever it comes out of it and it's it's rather neat it's just it's something a little bit different uh, and you can reverse the out transition uh, the the uh, from middle see how instead of black in the middle it goes black from the outsides and transitions to the center uh, whenever we look at the in transition you have circle explode and it's reversing so it's uh, and let me get rid of the end here so it stops uh, doing that and we'll make the we'll we'll make this four there we go so this would be the in transition for the circle explode and it's actually imploding if you wanted to ex explode it would explode from the middle and go to the outside so uh, something something I'll show you too that you could do because uh, we're gonna have a little bit of fun at um, uh, we'll, we'll have a little fun with one of the effects here pretty soon so you see there you see how these two are kind of converging so you could do stuff like that now I know that doesn't look like very it doesn't look super interesting but on a quick thought I realized hey what if you put two opposite effects layered and they just go into that um, so that's something for you to think about um, transitions this is uh, this is what what I call warping a lower effect so I, I mentioned earlier that you can warp an effect uh, very easily with a transition and um, in this instance here we have uh, this is the fold transition I'm gonna go ahead and pu push the on effect uh, put the off effect on and you can see how we use the wipe transition here to enter into sh to reveal the on and then we flipped it over and underneath of it was the wave effect so if you if you time these right with your with the beat of your music set set up the the transition you can have this done in like 0.5 seconds so um, and you can see whenever you flip it it's just something really quick and it just keeps going so you, the transitions again very very powerful um, I wanted to show you how to bulk edit so you can bulk edit with transitions as long as you have multiple selected uh, you can um, uh, come down here and any one of these options we can click on the in or out make sure those are selected whatever you want to bulk edit and let's say we we wanted to bulk edit all of them all we have to do is right click basically right click under the uh, to bulk edit your uh, selection and then you can select whatever one it is that you uh, prefer so uh, we could say I don't know um, bow tie sometimes the bow tie doesn't exactly work the the, the best way uh, but we'll, we'll give it a shot we'll say these are all two seconds long bulk edit them for two seconds and if we click on them that will render it and what if we did this let's see So there you've got it doesn't want to do it whenever yeah so sometimes layering the layering the the uh, bow tie doesn't work as well so let's try a different one we'll try a different one try a different one let's say I'll select it first I've got them all selected here I'm just gonna find one first that I like let's say um, star Oh, the star doesn't work sometimes too that's another one that's a bad one to show let's uh, let's try slide bars that'll work and I'll bulk edit that one right click bulk edit and we'll re-render it so there you can see the bars going off on each one of those 
uh, we can do the in. If we have them all selected, Oop. if we do the in transition for one second, uh, and if we do the out transitions for 1.5, let's go back to the in and let's do a um, square explode. This, this one's a fun one too. We'll bulk edit the square explode. So if we click on there, so you see them all explode at the same time and one transition out at a time. So something fun to play with. That's This is one of the reasons why I enjoy the, um, the buffer. And you can see here I just did right click and I applied a third, top third or left third, middle and right third. So there's one third, there's two thirds, there's three thirds right there. So that's how I created that. Uh, and then kind of the last one is just having fun with it a little bit here. Uh, and uh, you're going to see that I only put one transition on any of these except for the last one here. And just just know that this it, sequencing can be this simple, but it can be this tedious because it didn't take me five minutes to put this together. It did take me quite a bit of time to put this together. So if you can imagine a fast-paced sequence uh, and having these kind of quick zips and pops inside of a sequence to, to make it fit the music, it does take time to do that. But it's something that you can do, and uh, if you take the time and you spend a little bit of uh, uh, time sitting in front of X lights and using the transitions, you'll find that they're just as useful as the on effect as you see where people don't think about using the on effect. They just turn an effect on or they pop the bars effect on. Now you're using the motion of a transition to create an effect literally out of an effect that doesn't do anything other than turn it on or make it one color. So um, guys, that's all I have for you uh, as, far as, as far as the transitions go. Do you have any questions? Uh